Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Absolutely! Or is it the weekly poll? Even I don't know today. Today, we're joined by our guest, Rob, from Comics Explained, to basically just BS for an hour, because nothing yes. has been announced because the holidays just happened. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and I am currently joined by Jesus. <laughs> oh, he's right there? He's right, right over Very there. shy <laughs> over there. He's giving me the stink eye, like... You're blowing up my spot, man. Come on. Would, would, you, <laughs> my child. would you pass that time with Jesus to talk to Sal and I? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's not like he's going anywhere. So That's true. Yeah. That's true. Well, I mean, in about an hour, his son's going to be going down, so he'll be heading out, you know? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> he's got to bail. Got to head out to hang out somewhere else. Yeah, yeah. I don't, yeah it's, it's, it's cool, man. Because I was thinking about this the other day, man. I was like, I do kind of miss just, like, hanging out. And just, just like chit chatting about comics and whatnot. I mean, we do it, like, and you're always welcome. <laughs> I appreciate it, man. It's the, same, it's the same Sal time on the same Sal channel. <laughs> All I right, do well, miss it, man. Let, yeah. Okay, so I know based off there are a few a few acquaintances we both have, Rob, that you have at least started the Spider Man Gang War. Yeah. Okay. You know, here's the thing. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm, I'm not against gang war. And to be honest, I think it's probably one of the more unique stories to come out of Spider-Man recently. Yeah. Um, I just, I mean, I like street level conflicts, but I don't know. Right. I mean, and, and Sal can speak to this man. Like one of the best moments of Spider-Man was during the dance slot run in, in big time. Yeah. When like he was the only one who could defuse the bomb. And it's just, and it's, it's things like that where it's like, sure, Spider-Man street level, but he doesn't feel like it. Right. Where he feels, right. he feels like much bigger than that. But I mean, I, I, I did, I did kind of dig it. I mean, I mean, what, okay. I want to know. Cause like, what is your all's, like, what were your all's thoughts on it, man? Because I only read the first issue, kind of like the prelude issue. I haven't caught up on the rest of it yet. Um, but the I The prelude's the best part. Now I yeah. don't know what's going on. <laughs> oh, really? That sucks, man, because I yeah. feel like it was only going to get better. Well, yeah. It feels like, and, I, and Sal can either argue or contest to this, but it feels to me like there's tie-ins that aren't published because it feels like things are being skipped. Like the prelude sets it up great. Oh, Peter, you've been screwing up. you got to go build a team. It's going to be great. Yeah. And then like the next issue immediately jumps to the team has been formed. Yes, there's something oh, that's said, a and, I, I and then know. they're like jump. It almost feels like weird time jumps are happening because like the it team does. is formed. Daredevil yeah. goes off, so Daredevil she's doing her thing now because it's not Matt, it's still Electra. Yeah, and Electra. Miles yeah. goes off. They, now he's in his spinoff. Uh, yep. Luke is in his spinoff, and then it's just yep. Spider Man and She Hulk. Right, which I'm I'm down for. I love that pairing, but it's like part of the fun. And I know you guys agree with me on this one. Is that like is the building of the team. Nobody yeah. doesn't yes. love watching a bunch of superheroes stand in a room and go, you, 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 and you. <laughs> like Let's dodgeball. See them all, <laughs> right, like dodgeball. And then watch them all, like how they have the personalities bounce off of them, have them like get their growing pains. And then we throw them into a big mixing bowl of, uh, of antagonists and we see how they work together. That, that's the yeah. real fun. This was just like, well, nobody has time for that. I got to get these tie-ins working. Yeah. Yeah. It felt no, that's really that's, that's how it feels. Yeah, that's how it feels. And it like like for example, like Bendis's New Avengers was kind of like that. Over the course of like the first issue, you get like 100%. you get the team. But it was the team was formed more out of just like they just all happen to be in the same place at the same time. Yep. And Captain America is just grasping at people in order yep. to just solve this crisis of all these villains who've escaped the raft. But then yeah. like a team actually forms out of it. And so like right. yeah, like that's 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 cool. No, I'm 100 percent on board with that. Like yep. like seeing the team come together and seeing like like Spider-Man swoop in and like save Miles Morales from being beaten to death, you know, or yeah. like, you know, like blown up by somebody or something like that. That's cool. Um, I will say what I did like about it was, God, if I remember, what was it? It was Tombstone's daughter who was trying yes, to earn a spot. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, that's so like, still like daughter, the primary plot. It's mostly that's about her. Going and, on. and then like Spider-Man, is she, like the, Tombstone's daughter's doing a bunch of stuff, right? Yeah. And then they don't just be like, oh, there's Spider-Man and She-Hulk and they just show up and they fight the villains and they leave. It, it's yeah. like, oh, what is happening? That, that, yeah, it just sounds very disorganized. It, it feels right. that way. It does. Yeah. And then Miles, yeah. after immediately meeting up with Peter, he went back to his book where yeah. he was teamed up with Blade to fight a vampire. But that ended almost immediately because now Uncle Aaron's up to some no good again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, that, okay. So I loved the idea of Miles meeting Blade's daughter. Yeah. And like, and, and just, and, and kind of hanging out with her. One of the, okay. And this is how I know, this, this is how I know Marvel. They're building, either building up to something big with Blade, or it's just one of those things where it's just kismet and happens to work out that way. Cause yeah. I don't know if you guys were reading Jed McKay's run, 
but right. of uh, of Moon Knight. But like Blade had like a cameo in that, and he taught Reese how to like turn herself into mist and fly away. So I'm like, okay, it's like Blade's appearing in everything, which yeah. is kind of ironic to me because the most significant appearances that he had recently was in like Jason Aaron's Avengers run. Which and I like. didn't do anything liked that him. mattered. But oh, yeah. he did. Right. I mean, well, that was like his whole thing in that run though, wasn't it? He was just, hi guys, this is the Avengers and I'm also Blade. And then the Avengers were like, no, you're on the Avengers. He goes, no, I just happen to be in the same room. Like yeah. <laughs> and, and just helping you guys fight against foes and doing things that Avengers do, but I'm not actually an Avenger. Yeah, yeah no. It's, I, f- I feel like, like they try to set up for the movie that is never gonna happen. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's right. That movie is a no-brainer. I don't understand why it would take any amount of effort to make a Blade movie. You know, it's yeah. just dude hunts vampires, conflict resolution. I okay, I've been arguing this prop. A couple of cameos, put Elsa Bloodstone in there for fun. Move it oh, on. Dude, that Elsa would Bloodstone. be dope. Yes, <laughs> Elsa Bloodstone. Yeah, like yeah. she just she just like running through chasing after something and it's like hi bye and like that's right. it like, dude, it would be amazing oh, dude, yeah you just you, you do like a little uh a little underworld joke where it's like you know blades fighting vampires and suddenly a werewolf shows up and he's like oh i don't have time for werewolves and then elsa bloodstone's like i'm hunting werewolves over here i'm sorry and they just yeah. cross paths they team up they kill their respective vampires and werewolves blades like i'm going this way Elsa's like i'm going that way high five moving on movie over yeah i don't understand yeah dude that would be amazing dude, i i love what they did with elsa bloodstone and werewolf by night yes and so i'm really excited to see where they go with their character because that that whole part of marvel and even now like you just kind of feel that whole part of marvel like it it has existed but i feel like it hasn't really had a major focal point since like the 90s it's true and so like the supernatural side yeah Yeah, the supernatural man the midnight suns and all that kind of stuff like that i think the 90s is when it was at its peak but i do like i do miss the emphasis on that because it, it was team ups and stuff that you you never really got a chance to see. Like I still say, one of the huge missed opportunities that they have going on right now, they should have yeah. brought back Doctor Strange's Secret Avengers from the nineties, oh, right? Yeah. Or uh, Secret, Secret Defenders, Avengers, yeah, yeah, from the nineties. Yeah, yeah, he's like, yeah. I'm just gonna randomly draw tarot cards out of a deck and then grab <laughs> that team, and we're all gonna go fight Dormammu. And like, and it was it was cool, right? I yeah. I loved it. And so, it, I mean, do you feel like Marvel's doing so like the comic side of it, not the movies, but the yeah. comics yeah. seem to be almost anti anybody teaming up lately. Well, like, the, they, like it feels like they want Blade to be a solo thing because he's gonna have a movie, and yeah. Doctor Strange, instead of teaming up with a lot of guys, he's gonna be a solo thing, not make the Defenders again, you know. No, yeah. But we are getting a Blade event from Marvel and Jed McKay with art by Pepe Larraz. Wait, what? Called, yeah, we are getting a straight up Marvel Comics event where vampires invade the Marvel universe. It's called Blood Hunt. It is drawn by effing Pepe X Men Larraz. Written yeah, by man. Red Moon Knight McKay, and it stars <laughs> Blade, and it's gonna be like Thor and Miles and every uh, Doctor Strange and Blade at the center of it, just just hunting vampires. Right. Dude, I'm 100 percent down for that. Yeah, Blood Hunt is happening, and it's coming spring. I, I, I feel like I feel like this is all prepped up for a movie that just hasn't. Is that Absolutely, 100. Uh, no, Blade's like yeah. a game. movie. Yeah, Blade's getting a game, and it's like. What? Yeah, that game's not going to come yeah. out for another seven years or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it comes out in like 2027, I think, or something. Exactly. Like that. Uh, but like, there's no, there's, there's even concept art for that game. They're just like, it, they, 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 that is, that seems to be like their weird blade approach where they're like, ladies and gentlemen, Marshall Ali's here. And in eight years, we're going to make a blade. Video game. <laughs> and well, over here, we're making a blade video game. And in 27 years, you are going to play it. It's going to be awesome. To a degree, I can, I can kind of understand though, because when have you seen anything blade centric since like the Wesley Snipes movies? Yeah. Like it's almost non-existent. So I mean, yeah. at this point, like, which is weird. Outside of, <laughs> yeah, like show. outside of people, outside of people who saw the movie or were reading the comics back then, Blade's untested. So there's 100%. no way to know if like a Blade movie would perform well or if it would bomb. I think it would perform great. Of course but, it would, know. because it, well, first of all, there's there's only one thing you need to do in order to make Blade not bomb. Don't spend two hundred million dollars on it. <laughs> <laughs> okay just was well, that a pitch have you seen a movie called day shift on netflix is that the one that had um ethan hawk yes i believe yeah I, I saw it a, i rec- i saw it a long time ago but i don't remember the details of it okay so th- this is literally a blade movie jamie fox is a vampire hunter who teams up with like day walker style stuff he's down at his luck because his girlfriend is trying to break up with him and stuff like that so he goes on these adventures to fight against vampires, and they've discovered a way for the vampires to walk in the day line, daylight. So he ends up teaming up with a vampire to fight the vampires in an organization meant to kill vampires. 
It's literally just a high octane thing involving uh, James Franco's brother and uh, and uh, and uh, JB Fox. Yeah, just killing vampires with awesome tools. It's a Blade movie in everything but name. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean that's what people want to see. Like, I mean, there's there are certain things from like the original Blade that people want to see come back. Like they want the opening to be Tracy Lords or somebody akin to her and like, you know, the, the techno, you know, club scene in the beginning, they want to see blade, like throw his dagger and like, you know, just goes in a circle and cuts people's head off. I mean, there's yeah. some things they want to see, but like at the same time, like the, the possibility, see this, this is where thing, and I can see where they're kind of, where they're biding their time because Feige came out and he was like, they want somebody from the Sony verse to come over to the Marvel cinematic universe. Hmm. I mean, I don't want to believe it's Mobius, but a part of me also does because Sal, you know, this like, yeah, Blade got his daywalker powers from Mobius, right? Oh, like, yeah. Oh my yeah, God. Yeah. Mobius, yeah. Like Mobius bit him and that's where he gained the ability to like walk during the day. So it's like, yeah. okay, cool. So that's, that's how you get that. So, I mean, honestly, it depends on how deep they want it to go because like, when Blade was fighting in his younger years, he came across Wolverine a couple times. I mean, there's, you know, it's very interconnected and there's a lot of shared stuff. Yeah. I don't know if they're going to, if, if they want to do something like that, if they want Blade to just, if they want the movie to just be like, so while like all this stuff's going on with the Avengers, like over here, this guy's fighting Dracula. And like, and that's, that's fine cool. with me. I mean, like, yeah, yeah it's fine. Marvel, <laughs> is, Marvel is the thing where it's like the Avengers are over. I mean, look, there's a very successful video game franchise in which Spider Man deals with massive citywide invasions and the Avengers are just over there. Yeah. Like that is that is a straight up plot point that no one seems to complain about. And yet in the yeah. movies it's impossible for them to pull off that like the Avengers could possibly be fighting, I don't know, uh, you know, the mandroids over in like you know, San <laughs> Francisco. The, the only reference we ever got was, is, the only reference ever got was Guardians. Yeah. Oh, why were the Guardians there? Oh, they were doing the ego thing. Uh, yeah, of course yeah. they were. Like, what? It's like no one, no one even asked where the Guardian. Who would ask where the Guardians are when Thanos is attacking? Because it's like every time that the Guardians are doing anything, first of all, it's a delightful cinematic adventure, and for another, it's like they're in another effing galaxy. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. No, but Spider you're right. It's not going to teleport over there. Don't the games do that though? He's like, I can't get a hold of the Avengers. Oh, oh well. he never even. I mean, Spider-Man Two, the video game, he didn't even bother to call. No, he's but he did like, try yeah. in the first game. <laughs> the first game, he's just like, I think they're in the West Coast, and I, and I, I swear to God, I now, I, I guarantee that was like a. Well, maybe the Square game will be big. Oh, oh yeah. no, nah, they're in the West Coast of San Francisco with the Square yeah. game taking place. Oh, yeah. it, it bombed. Nah, it's not tied to us at all. No, it's just another. <laughs> it's an unrelated adventure in our own universe. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't remember that at all. Like, I don't, I don't remember him <laughs> referencing like the Avengers in the first. Th that being said, I don't remember a whole lot of details about the first game. But the, the well, fact the, remains, it, it wasn't even in plot. You got to go to the Avengers Tower, and then yeah. he'll comment on it on why they're back. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, okay. Just okay. take a picture yeah. of it for the for the bugle or something. It's cool. oh, okay, yeah. 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 But yeah, no, I mean, yeah. That, that being said, man, yeah, like Blade just being a movie where he fights some vampires, has some really cool gadgets, his sword, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, that's that's all we really want to see in a Blade film. So yeah, I do agree yeah. with the statement, like how hard could it possibly be to make a blade movie like how difficult could it be so that yeah. i mean it makes me feel like either there's something else going on or they had plans for blade that were supposed to like tie into other stuff like i imagine a tie into eternal any uh into eternals in some way and like that movie people were just kind of like i mean whatever you know so yep. it's just sort of like we don't know what to do with the character <laughs> yeah. people don't even I, remember that there was a post-credit scene in which blade appeared because nobody stayed in the theater that long <laughs> yeah now that being said the, uh, i loved eternals i'm not shade i'm not throwing shade on eternals i actually really enjoyed that movie and i liked both post-credit scenes but uh you know there's a whole like oh yeah no black knight ebony blade and blade off screen no one's ever gonna do anything with that that's all no, no. <laughs> It's it's weird because what I feel is going on is right now in the MCU, they're just like, we need to ignore phase four and five to the best of our ability. <laughs> yeah. I, I legit think that's what they're doing right now because based on all the current leaks of what's coming out, it's not referencing anything. Yeah. I mean, yeah. hell, Kang is technically right now, we know that they're not, they've already fired uh, uh, Jonathan, Jonathan Majors. Majors. Jonathan Majors. Yeah, yeah. We already, he's already been fired, but they already set that up. The end of Loki too. Oh yeah, that yeah. was handled by the ant guy. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, listen, yeah, it was I, it was I, just so hand wavy. Yeah, it was just take so it. hand wavy. I'll yeah. take it. Kang is gone over at themselves. This point. They're they're like, how are we gonna fix this Kang situation? I'm like, you, you got a you got a gift. It's a gift from on high. You don't have to make a Kang movie anymore. Yeah, yeah. No one wanted a Kang movie anyway. Yeah. 
It was a terrible decision for Big Bad because he's never been a big. Kang is uh, 99% of the time been a joke. Like, I mean, like he's the guy, he's the villain they fight before the actual villain arrives. Even when he <laughs> is serious and is the big bad, like Kang no Dynasty. one is like, oh no, Kang. Everyone's like, ugh. Yeah. Like, and, and when I say everyone, I mean the reader. Like, Kang has only been cool since like that recent Kang series, like that miniseries that looked great and was really yeah. fun. Like, that was dope. People always go, oh, Avengers yes. Forever. And I'm like, you can't make Avengers Forever into a movie, people. No. And if they did, it would it would bore the audience 100%. so bad. So bad. It would it would bore the hell out of the audience. No, yeah. dude, like only only myself left to conquer for Kang. That that was a that was a phenomenal story, and I, I still say to this day, Ant Man three, Quantum Mania was a terrible idea. Like what they should have yeah. done is they should have just had like a standalone Kang film and be like, this is where Kang comes from. Cool, done, and then just and, and go forward from there. But yeah. like I like like months ago, like people were asking about that, and I was like, dude, I wouldn't even do Kang anymore. Like I would just have no. Doctor Doom from like some alternate reality whose world was like laid waste to by one of the Kangs, right? Like he he shows up, right? However it is they choose to do it, and just like wipes out the king like the whole king uh, council in like one fell swoop and it was like it's doom's time now right yeah. because like because as soon as like, i was i was sitting thinking i was like that's i mean that's what jonathan hickman did in, in his fantastic four like valeria tells him about like all the dooms under the citadel he goes there sits on the throne and says like here i can build and like dude that would and like they'll be the most doom thing ever you have him go yeah. in there wipe out all the kings and just like surrounded by their corpses he sits on a throne and he's like here i can build and it's just yeah. like done like that's, well, that's, that's the rumor that's, that's, the that's rumor is mean. that he's the backup plan I, I hope i hope he is i really yeah like let yeah. Kang. like you, you you built up loki 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 technically never fought kang because kang was a variant of he who remains a creation in the mcu mm-hmm. they made they had to make look kang was already confusing because if you don't know kang is like five different individuals that's not yeah. five that's five and then, Mortis, but they, yeah, yeah, but but they were all like retconned into being Kang. They yes, weren't even 100%. Kang. That was that was Celestial Madonna, and that was the yeah. uh that yeah, because we had that conversation. That was yeah. um Avengers Forever. Yeah. yeah. But, but what like, I'm saying is like all. why is that the villain they chose? The villain that was never a huge threat other than this, one book. Yeah, you know, there's like, no there's there's no great <laughs> Kang book they can go like, we're gonna adapt this. There, it's just there a bunch really of random isn't. stories. It's like even Celestial Madonna, which is good. I read 900 pages for that new Rockstars cameo. Oh. It's terrible, Rob. It's got it's got its moments. Yeah, it, it has its moments that are like, yeah. this is amazing. But yeah, he's like Manta. Like Mantis is going to give birth to like the most powerful being ever, and like I'm gonna I want to make it my own. No, that 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 really is true. Like when you think about Kang, even more recently, right? Like in the, in the, oh my God, in the Dr. Doom solo series. Yes. Jesus, that series yes. is amazing. Kang just like shows up for a little while and then like Doom yeah. kills him. But like, no. like that's it. Everyone no, like, that's kills Kang it. or removes him. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. Like even yeah, like, when Kang was important, like Ravona Renslayer shows up and just goes like, no, nah, I'm going to just put him in a coma and then take over and then <laughs> run time for a little while. Like She literally did. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah no that's that's no that's dude that is a perfect point like there i mean with thanos yes there's a million of those right there's there's a story where he fights all the most powerful people in the universe yep um i can't remember what that one's called um there's the original thanos solo series where like he fights galactus i mean there's yeah. story after story after story infinity gauntlet and you know they could all, all literally do like, a thanos solo movie like they could do yes. the johnny kate's thanos miniseries as a movie and people would go yes. see it like they could do that but yeah. no one is gonna go see kang the movie no because they, they kind of they I, have to create a lot of their stuff and and they, they kind of have to they have to create their own stories involving him because oh. usually it is it's either something like children's crusade which is yes. more of a scarlet witch slash that's, a doom? Kids story. That's, a, that's more of a doom story <laughs> it, 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 is, it is more of a dr doom story that's true he shows up to whisk the kids away yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I there's, there's, yeah i mean there's it's it's more them than it is kang right i mean it's yeah kang is not a character that that you can look at and and really say like there's five or six different stories that you can do based on the character because right now i mean it's it's not as though they went into this and they built up the idea that immortus and uh scarlet centurion whatever his name yeah. is and you know um ramatut right, right and like hang himself they're like they're a bunch of different people and, like iron lad and all that kind of stuff because i mean i mean sure like the history of the characters it's just super easy to explain it's just kang at different points in time in his yeah. life right so yeah. like yeah. it's like you as, as a 13 year old and then like a 25 year old and then like a 50 year old and a 60 year old yeah, yeah yeah just different points in your life 
Totally. Whatever, who cares? Just that add time easy, in, yeah. and then that's yeah, then that's Kang. But it's not as though the MCU went into that. They were just no. like, here's every variant of Kang all well, at yeah. once, right? Yeah. And then it's like there okay, wasn't even so... really a surprise on it. They were like, this is right? who yeah. remains. Oh, well, the other ones are more or scarier. <laughs> we're like, oh, Kang's terrifying, and then Kang's killed by Ant Man. <laughs> that, that dude that wiped it all away man it completely did yeah the kang that clearly was going to be the kang of the movies dies in a reshoot in a ant-man 3 movie then loki season 2 goes and the rest of them forget about it here, <laughs> yeah, they here really is get referenced. literally that we get like clearly an extra shot where they go here's a character it's not even one of the main characters uh he goes yeah and we don't worry about it here, here's here just a even if it's just a, a like just a boardroom quick idea, you know, you're like, oh my god, because we have to make. Clearly, they're like, we have to make an Avengers movie to make the brand still viable before right. we do Secret Wars, and we like kind of soft reboot the entire universe. What do we do? Well, you need to have some weirdo Ultron movie, right? Because like, Age of Ultron was that. It was like barely part of the Infinity Saga. You know, it's like the 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 Rock is in it. Yes, he's got an Infinity Rock. That's it. The rest of it's all about like Ultron. And arguably has one of the best Avengers scenes in the entire franchise, which of course is them trying to lift the hammer. But yes. like outside of that, what's the story? I say high evolutionary upset from his failure in space goes to actual earth and builds on one to mountain. Wait, didn't you know, he die? No. He's the only he villain not to die. He I thought he died. Die. No, they left oh. him there. I'm like, yes. So you put him there. Now, where did go Mountain? I mean, technically, he was on the ship as it exploded, but there could be any number of comic uh, book yeah. away. He didn't. He died the same way that Hela died, the same way that Scarlet Witch died, the same way that. Uh, like where we that don't end. see yeah. it. Yeah, we don't, even even I think I don't remember. I think Hela actually before like the all of Asgard collapses, you see like a little green explosion. So it's like clearly she teleported. Hella's yeah. a great one. I don't know if there's any like really fantastic Hella stories, but like, man, Hella versus the versus the Avengers. I would love to see that, if only just to see Kate Blanchett just be yeah. the sexiest she's ever been <laughs> again. Uh, so I mean, it's okay. It's not really a Hella fights the Marvel Universe type story, but there is a story. I don't remember which one it was, but it's, it's one that came out shortly after Original Sin when Angela was introduced, yeah. and it's where Angela took over the throne of Hell. Mm -hmm. like from hella like it was it was yeah. like the war of the hell lords or something along those lines yeah yeah, yeah that makes that, sense. that was a cool story yeah, yeah that'd be cool you get to get to uh, get angela into the marvel cinematic universe i uh i would also take what was the um there's a thor story where hella like oh no it's it's mephisto versus the marvel universe that's what it was hella shows up in that one to like she gets into a into an argument with 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 Mephisto. I was like, oh, where from behind the scenes from Dan? He's telling us a uh, gun confirmed the high evolutionary did not die. Yay! Oh, nice. Okay. He's cool. also just so great. Like yeah, he the actor is amazing. The character was cool and interesting. And like, yeah, yeah, I'd love to see that. Plus, you get to have a cow woman show up, and she could reveal that she uh, actually <laughs> delivered Wanda and Quicksilver, and that their dad is, Bova? is Magneto. Bova. You, you yes. just want a Bova, cow woman. Bovine, yeah. <laughs> yeah, justice for yeah. Bova. Listen, they yeah, have man. they they put Rintra into Multiverse of Madness. They have like a cow sprite they could just like reskin. We're good. Yeah. Oh, dude, yeah. I forgot about they put Rentra. Yeah, he doesn't do anything. It should he Rentra doesn't. should have been 90s Rentra, where he's he's big, he's insecure, he's played by like Seth Green or something. He's just like, oh, hey doc, what are we doing here? Like that was so much more fun. Yeah. And him just being in the background. I'm like, why did you spend 40 million dollars to have a background extra that that just confuses people? People are like, yeah. what's yeah. up with the green with the green goat man? And it's like, first of all, he's a minotaur. Secondly, he's cool. And he replaced <laughs> Wong in the 90s for like a hot second. And third, he's a wizard. Like, nobody cares. Yeah. But the overall, the problem I think going on right now with Kang and all the other props and problems is I think Marvel just got too big for its britches. 100%. Uh, yes. I, I don't know. Because they came into phase four, like, we'll just make a bunch of like <laughs> random superheroes again. That's exactly we'll, the approach. We'll, we'll, we'll take our, we'll take all of our, oh, uh, we, I spent 10 years spinning 20 different plates in the air suspended by sticks and then i'm just gonna pass them off basically just, just you got it i'm well, sorry yeah. what well we do have yeah. another topic here because uh on vacation a couple things happened uh, apparently rob's the only one that even watched it uh what if came out oh okay you <laughs> know what y'all let's have this conversation let's have this you conversation about episodes? what if yeah i watched the new okay it's not bad. And, and was it <laughs> Kalara? I forgot Orleans? it existed until halfway through it. And then I was the, like, the, oh, I'm, the, I'm done. I'm not going <laughs> to. The character they created, that oh, was yeah. a cool story. That was, that was a really cool okay. story. I, I enjoyed her story. 
the villain of the story felt like it came out of nowhere, right? It felt like it, it felt it felt like they got halfway through it and they were like, oh, we need an ending for this. <laughs> and so they were just kind of like, we'll just grab him, we'll just grab that person and 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 just do it. And and I was sitting here thinking, I was like, I mean, there's so many, there's so many great stories they could do. Like, do a what if episode on what if like Toby Maguire and Andrew Garfield never showed up in Spider-Man No Way Home. Yeah. And Peter Parker just lost his mind and killed the villains. Right. right like, right. like, yeah, like give us a what if story, you know, where where things can things can be dark or they can be kind of twisted or, or something along those lines. Right. I mean, it doesn't yeah. have to be ruins, right? But I mean, there's there's a <laughs> litany of what if stories that could be done. I I I tweeted that out, right? It was just it was thoughts that I had just off the top of my head, you know, and, and it's like it's you know, like what the- what if Huh? The titles that I saw, because I haven't seen it, but it's the same problem I felt that they had in season one, where they're trying to, like, they're trying to take the people, the characters that didn't matter as much, and people like kind of liked, but you know, they didn't have the big following, and they're trying to like position them into a better, more higher spot. When mm. you, I would have watched yeah. it a heartbeat if they were like, "What if Spider-Man didn't have the other Spider-Man?" That would, yeah. dude, that that wouldn't even been something I would have forgotten. Right. That's something or, I would have been like. Hell what yeah! What, what, what if they didn't show up? Or what if two of them died? Yeah. Like what if uh, what yeah. if Andrew Garfield Spider Man had to stay? You know. Yeah. Or I mean, what they, if what if MJ had been killed instead of Aunt May? Yeah. Right? Or or something along those like, lines. Like those are interesting. Plots, not the random. Yeah, but those, those are all Spider Man stories, and it's all complicated. I can imagine them being like, we barely could do Spider Man. Okay, movie, fine. You know? What if the Avengers failed in the first movie and yeah. Loki conquered? And boom. What if yeah. what if Loki won movie? Like or yeah. you know, thirty minutes. You could easily do that, and and then easily kill Thanos, like they do in every episode for whatever reason. Um, what if Thanos? What won? about that crazy one where like Tony Stark got like infested by a virus or something like that? And became oh yeah, evil? yeah. What if our, the what one if where he became a uh, Miss Sinister or whatever it is? Or yeah. Something like that. Yeah. What if what, <laughs> yeah. if, uh, what if Stark's uh, armor came to life? What if uh, you know? There's any, what if Frank Castle became the Captain America? You know, like, you know, there's a number of other. That would be pretty dope, actually. Right? Like, what if, depending on what they own, they could be like, what if the Defenders were actually there? Yeah. Yeah. Because I mean, that being said, these these titles, none of this sounds like something I want to watch. Nebula. I will tell you, that first episode is just literally Nebula as Judge Dredd, and it's a lot of fun. I was like, (laughs) okay. okay. (laughs) What is this Dredd episode? (laughs) I saw your tweet on that. And, and, okay. So you felt like it was Judge Dredd. I felt like it was Blade Runner. It is Blade right. Runner. It looks like yeah. Blade Runner, but it feels like Dread. The not and by the way, not the freaking comic book where it's like subversive and it's actually like anti-authoritarian. It, I'm talking about the movie, like yeah. the the raid, like the Sylvester Stallone, or the oh, um, oh the good one, the, the, new <laughs> one. Yeah, the good one, the good one. <laughs> hey, the Carl Sylvester Arbor. Stallone one was not bad. It's a fun. Have movie you seen to it watch, recently? Man. I can tell you this. Yeah. It is I mean, oh, it's, it's definitely corny, and it, it yeah, it's it's not it's not by any standard of measurement a phenomenal film. But like, I mean, I would take time out of my day on like a Saturday afternoon to watch it. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. No. It, um, and let me tell you, uh, the dread outfit, uh, outside of the fact that Sylvester Stallone like refused to wear the helmet for more than ten seconds, um, <laughs> it's really comic book accurate. Like the look of dread from '96 or whatever looks. It, it's it's pretty. It's pretty on par. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's pretty but dope. Yeah. But no, anyway, like, I, Nebula. <laughs> oh, because yeah. the only two of these that even sound interesting is what if Iron Man crashed into the Grandmaster, the one yes. where he goes to Sakar. I it's want to not what you think bad. it is. No? It's not what you think it is. Oh. I mean, it, it, it is, it is, but it's it's if you're anything like me, it's not going to go in the direction that you think it is. Okay. And then yeah. Captain Carter fights the Hydra Stomper because I just like seeing her come back, but that doesn't... Dude, I love uh, Captain Carter. I loved her as a character. Like, yeah, she's I'm so glad she got freaking completely pantsed in the Multiverse of Madness movie. I'm sure everyone <laughs> really enjoyed seeing that. Like, it's just a awful, just awful and frustrating. Yeah. People cheer. No, I, she was she appears. People are like woo, and Marvel's like, oh, sorry, we turned it into kind of like an, a, a weird joke. <laughs> I mean, that's okay. So that's that's the thing. That's the thing. See, Mar. Okay, you know what? Wait, um, so, like, m- the biggest issue that I one of the biggest issues Give I have Rob a headache. at the moment. <laughs> yeah, let's yeah no, no, no. It's just like I'm I'm actually getting over a sty in my eye, which sucks. Oof. But um, yeah, like one of the biggest issues that I have with Marvel in recent years is they don't take risks and they don't tell stories that are like morally questionable, right? Okay, yeah, so yeah. like, like, okay, so here's a good example. So like, I I I, I made this video where I like I pitched the idea of the X Men. To Kevin Feige and them, right? Yeah. And every comment almost was like, it's an awesome idea. Marvel's never going to do it, right? <laughs> because it's just, it's, it's either too unique or because it doesn't fall in line with like the normal kind of thing. And it's like, yeah, but like they need that though, right? Like yeah. one of the things yeah. that, that I, like it's one of the things that made Tony Stark so great was the fact that like he was morally questionable sometimes. Yeah. Yep. 
Right. And it was just kind of like, I mean, sure, doing the doing doing what he believes to be the right thing, you know, but going about it like the wrong way, you know, and, and it's 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 cool and it's awesome, but they absolutely need that kind of stuff. And I feel like what if is the perfect landscape to like present morally questionable stories. Yeah. Right. And we just kind of don't get that either that or they give us stories where it just kind of nullifies the believability of anything that came before it. Like, mm -hmm. hey, guys, Thanos walks through a portal. And what does Vision do? He just cuts him in half. So or, or Ultron or whoever it is, like, he just cuts him in yeah. half. And it's kind of like, so like, why didn't he do that in the first time? <laughs> like, why yeah. didn't he just it, cut him in half? And, right. and you can't this, tell right? me like, it wasn't it was like he wasn't available. He had him literally he was face to face with him in yeah. Infinity War. Like, oh, wait, I'll just cut him in half with my with my laser beam. I, 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 Superior Iron Man could have been a what if, as a good yes. As, oh as my a god, that would have been so just, good, right? Especially because they don't yeah. even need to get Robert Downey Jr. Well, like, I'm it's surprised. A cartoon. I'm surprised they didn't try more ideas like Superior Iron Man and stuff that they want to turn into shows because they turned their little G-rated Marvel Zombies experiment into a show, a whole yeah. ass show. Which, so why way, why really wasn't like why wasn't this was ten backdoor pilots like? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It would have been cool. It would have been cool. Because one of the things that I did, and, and, and that's the thing. So season two kind of seems to lack the direction and the purpose that season one did. Um, the Okay, I will say the the very, very ending of the episode, of the final episode, is cool. And and you're just going to kind of be like, okay, so like that's what's up. Um, so that's 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 going to be awesome. But as, as a season, it doesn't really have... A, it doesn't really seem to have the same kind of purpose and motivation like season one did, right? Season one was like purposeful, uh, purposeful. it was intentional, as little sense as it made, Ultron got the Infinity Gauntlet, which apparently works in the multiverse. So <laughs> so like there was that whole story arc with the Watcher and everything. Mm -hmm. This one just doesn't seem to have any of that, right? And it just and, and it's not terrible because it does feel in a lot of ways like self-contained stories, which is what yeah. What If was, right? Yeah. They were just independent stories. And outside of like the What If series, like what is it? They had the What If ones on Age of Ultron, they had um, some like the what if stories that like tied into events. Yes. Right? Like outside of that, annihilation. All the old annihilation, exactly. All the old 70s, 80s, what if stories. Oh, just, yeah. Like, what if Doctor Strange was a disciple of Dormammu? What if Frank yes. Castle's family never died? It what was if just a high evolutionary had like won during Evolutionary War? What if uh, Korvac yeah, saw exactly. it ended differently? Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. Yeah. It's just it's just those those single one-off things. So looking at it from that perspective, it feels more like a television-based version of the original what if series. But I feel like season one kind of spoiled me a bit. And I was kind of hoping for like a just singular thread running through the entirety of the story. Yeah. And you kind of get that at the end, but then it just sort of comes out of nowhere. Right. Yeah. And it's like, okay. Well, because the first season, the, well, the first season yeah. is the, the job it's doing is to familiarize the audience they thought all had Disney Plus subscriptions uh, with the concept of the multiverse. Right. That yeah. was and, and I thought they were going to go further with it. Like I thought, oh, great. They got Jeffrey Wright to play the Watcher because then the Watcher can literally appear in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Mm -hmm. You know, and he'll be normalized and it'll be easy. And so, like, it'll be a cool moment. Like, there's nothing more fun as a Marvel fan than opening a story. And unexpectedly, the Watcher is either in the background or he shows up and you're like, Man. oh things are about to pop off you know, yeah dude really, that'd be so great if you're watching a movie that you're like oh i'm watching like 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 ant-man 3 can you imagine how much more fun it would have been and it's it's very silly because ant-man 3 was poorly written and it was written by 100 people and it sucks but like if <laughs> if at one point like uh scott lang is attacking kang and then the watcher appeared behind them and yeah they can't that, see him but like we right, can see the watcher right that yeah. way we know this is important that would yeah. also be about a fun to be a Easter big egg. deal. Yeah, see, it what would. movies did he pop up in? Where could we find him? Absolutely, yeah. or just just a big moment where it's like, uh, like I, I uh, there are moments where people like address the Watcher, where they're like, "Man, you being here means that's the, the things are about to be like really serious." And uh, oh, I don't know if we're gonna make it, man. They did that during Civil War. They're all yeah. just like sitting in a room and they're talking, and then like the Watcher appears, and they're yeah. like. Oh no! Well, what what <laughs> was it recently that happened where Spider Man is fighting with someone in New York and they're having a big bout and he's like, "We're gonna I be fine." War the the Watcher's Realms. not here. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it might have been War of the Realms, but I don't remember. And then he's like, "Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. He is. oh shit, is that the Watcher?" <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, the Watcher being like a kind of like stamp of like this is important. It could actually be a quicker, easier way than having Kevin Feige get in front of the camera every time people ask like, "Which one's the most important ones?" or "Which ones do I have to watch?" The ones the Watcher appears. Yeah. I got, I got a and, question. Maybe one of you can answer this. I'm sure Rob can. 
Oh, whatever like, happened to Nick Fury becoming the man on the wall, the watcher? Whatever happened to him? Becoming oh, the so watcher? that was answered in uh, fan. I think it was Dan Slott's fan. It's somebody's Fantastic Four run. I don't remember if it was I Dan so. Slott's or the one that came after. Mm-hmm. But um, yes, he and actually it was a there was a relatively recent crossover. Or story. Yes, oh, Re- uh, Reckoning War, I think, or something. Yes, like that, that's what it was. Back. Yes. Yeah. 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 And then there, there was there was a oh I want to say it was a new exile. It was oh my god. Yeah, I think it was. It was, was an ex- amazing idea to kill Uatu and like, but Nick Fury now pays the penance. Yeah. And yeah. then we never saw him again. Like what? <laughs> well, because it, it didn't go anywhere. It was like eh, well, you know. Yeah. Yeah. No. They yeah they brought it back recently and yeah I, I want to say it was during um. I want to say it was during the newest Exile story that they did. It was a mini series. I want to say that it was, but like he actually assembles the team together, okay. and it's like you guys have to go out and you guys have to deal with this because I want to say it's like yeah because they end up fighting. Oh my god, it's like it's like this mega Kang, this version of Kang that had like <laughs> wiped out his whole universe and became like this Galactus type character where he was okay. like traveling around. Yeah, because yeah because he either he either he killed Galactus in his universe or in a different universe and stole his power ah. so it was kang with the power cosmic traveling around the multiverse or something like that and consuming and destroying whole universes so, like the exiles yeah. had to come together um they like rescued saber from somewhere no it was saber from the original exiles run oh cool that, yeah yeah something like that anyway basically the whole gist is like that the the watcher nick fury yeah he was there he assembled a team and like he did some stuff um and they even kind of ran over the history about it, like how he was exiled to that role by the other watchers and that kind of thing. It was really, really cool. I mean, the story was garbage, but like what <laughs> they did with, with Nick That's Fury why I've never like, heard about it before fun. now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, honestly, yeah. Like once it gets closer to like when, when news about Kang starts amping up, whatever direction it goes in, it'd be a yeah. great time to cover that story. But there's one point where like they're fighting against like a hundred Kangs at once. Like it's, it's, it's crazy, but it's, it's pretty interesting. <laughs> yeah. Nice. You know what else yeah. is interesting? Segway. Uh, you know what else is interesting? No one really knew Aquaman 2 came out until it came out, and it still beat the Marvels. <laughs> Man. Which makes me wonder, because Aquaman 1 did over a billion dollars, and that was like their big, like, oh, we got to make everything like Aquaman now. Everything's got to be a new Lord of the Rings, basically. Uh-huh. Which makes me wonder, if they had properly promoted this, red carpeted it, the whole nine yards, do you think it could have at least made its money back? Yeah, a billion dollars, I don't back. know. But it would have made a billion. A billion? Yeah. yeah, I don't think it never would have made a billion. If Batman wasn't going to break a billion with the current state of WB, there's no yeah. way Aquaman 2 is going to break. No, it. but Aquaman could have made $450 million, $500 million. Like there's there's a reality where Aquaman 2 makes $500 million, where it's like, okay, oh, it doesn't respect. You know, no. here's here's the thing. Like one, I'm, I'm surprised it did as well as it did. I mean, I'm not surprised that it beat the Marvels. Um, one, because not a lot of people were big fans of Carol Danvers already. And two, there wasn't enough public knowledge about Kamala Khan or to yeah. or about a monica rambeau for people to care right right because, like, i, I actually really Ram- liked that by the way i don't i don't know what your opinion was but i liked marvels it was a fun oh, marvels, i also was, enjoyed marvel yeah. yeah it was fun it was a fun movie to watch but like yeah. we, when you when you sit people down and you say so here are the stars of the movie one of them they know about they don't like the other two they don't know anything about there's yeah. no incentive to go see the movie well and they couldn't, the, that, they couldn't promote it either like the fun of it is seeing those three interact with each other and it's like would have been really fun to see those three interacting with each other like talking to you know tv yeah. personalities and press you know, junkets and stuff like that yeah, yeah sitting in a room with puppies you know like all the promotional materials they do for these kinds of movies uh which they yeah. do unfortunately i didn't know if it was like a billion dollars worth of promotion but i <laughs> it was uh no i don't think it wouldn't have been a, it wouldn't have been a billion dollar film but it oh, probably no. would have made around i mean i would say between six and like 750 million dollars like it would have done better than it did yeah. um but that's that's why i say i mean like uh, you know I, I i get that like it had the whole writer strike and, and i get all of that but the issue here is even removing all of that right would it have done better than it did without the writer strike sure would it yeah. have done as well as it could have no. And the reason why is like, yes, I love Tiana Paris as Monica Rambeau. You could walk up to anybody and hold yeah. her up to them and say, who is this? And they're not going to know who it is. Right. With, with Kamala Khan, it was, 
a little bit different to a degree if we're only uh, only because of either how much love she got or how much hate she got on social media because there wasn't an in-between there weren't people who were just like i mean kamala khan's mid nobody was saying that right they were like she's amazing she's trash and like that's that's all it was like so people were aware of her and a lot of folks just don't like carol danvers as a character yeah. and so whether it's due to a lack of knowledge about the characters or a dislike of them there wasn't a lot of incentive to go see the movie now for aquaman 2 i'm surprised it did as well as it did i had no real desire to go see it because james gunn it. literally came out like a year ago or whatever and was like hey guys so like nothing coming out matters <laughs> until we do creature commandos yeah and it's like okay so like That's why, why would i, I go see bothered. the bothered like I, yeah. I, well, yeah. I saw the flash because i wanted to see the flash not because it was tied into anything i you know you wanted to go see the flash you wouldn't stop talking about wanting to go see the flash you wouldn't stop talking about it it's the flash well i mean also yeah, yeah. like you know i don't necessarily go see movies because they matter or because they're part of a greater universe it's 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 about having a good experience and about having like a fun story to tell and aquaman 2 could have been that and james gunn could have done better at his promotion being like listen it's not part of the universe, but I saw Aquaman 2 and it's great and I really enjoyed it. You know, it could have been really like that kind well, of... Well, no, they tried that with Flash. <laughs> uh, but, but Flash like, demonstrably was a broken-ass movie that yeah. starred an unlikable protagonist. I don't, I, don't, I don't know what else you could do with that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they people went into that movie being like, Ezra Miller? That guy? Um, yeah. Big it was not, already questionable, yeah. yeah. I'm already yeah. yeah. Yeah, they shouldn't have, they should not have gotten in front of it. Like, James Gunn should not have been like, oh, it's 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 incredible. Well, Tom Cruise loved it. Yeah. Uh, the other news that we've gotten, which might be might be something you enjoy seeing, Rob, or not, but I'm gonna pull it up. Uh, <laughs> is Ryan Reynolds has put out the official suit. Uh, well, well, never mind then. That news how hyped are you news. for Deadpool three though? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's uh, there's uh, nobody's not hyped for Deadpool 3. I mean, one, because it's the only movie coming out this year from yeah. Marvel. <laughs> but two, because it's Deadpool 3. Oh, and, like, like, every week we get Wolverine back. He's going to kill the Fox universe. He's going to be I'm, thrown into the, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, like, full on. Yeah. Plus, there's going to well, be all the jokes. I want. I was oh, bringing this up. Oh, here it is. Here it is. Okay, Dad. Dad's got me. He's got me. Ah. He, yelled, he yelled at me. And he said, "Do you not know how Instagram it looks? Works, it so. looks more comic book Deadpool." Yes. That I'm not gonna. I'm lie. down yeah. for. I'm bringing this up because I want to get your opinion on something. You've not been on a podcast with us officially in any capacity for like I don't know. I think it was like a year ago. Was your last appearance? Maybe. Maybe okay. sooner. But what did you feel about Beast being in Marvels and them finally acknowledging the X Men? Rob, I want a classic. Let me tell you something, man. <laughs> son, son, son. Man, let me tell you something. Dude, as soon as I was in that post credit scene, man, and, and Monica Rambeau wakes up in a white room and her mom's there, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, sure, whatever. And then a dude with blue fur walks by. And I was like, son, no way. And then Kelsey Grammer Beast yeah man like i i jumped out of my chair when i saw that i was ecstatic about that having said that like i'm wondering if that's something where they're just kind of like we're just acknowledging the existence of the x-men or if they're going to be if they're like so like monica rambeau is just going to bring them in from an alternate reality and like that's that's how they get here honestly i i don't really care i was ex <laughs> dude i gotta i gotta say man like i loved the way he looked yeah i yeah. loved it. it it's and that's one of the things i've always loved about the mcu like you get fox you know and then you get like galactus who's just a giant cloud that's right or, yeah. or or you you get like these characters and it's like okay i mean they kind of look cool but they look a little gimmicky yeah. Right, like the Marvel Cinematic Universe has always been really, really good at taking comic book characters and turning them into more like realistic and tangible type characters. Mm -hmm. And and I always, God, I always loved that. Like I always loved that. So yeah, man, I was very, very excited about the idea of, uh, about seeing Beast in the post credit scene. Yeah, but again, I man, remember like you and I were having breakfast like the morning I saw it, and we both thought it was going to be a Doom post credit scene. You're like, the rumor is yeah. it's Doom that's that's i'm not gonna lie that's kind of what i was hoping is yeah is there was a part of me there was a part of me and i don't remember what the basis behind my thought process was but there was part of me that was hoping that in some capacity it would be dr doom i don't know why yeah. i was thinking it would be dr doom but i was hoping because you want mcu doom. to be good again like, because they probably <laughs> shot that because they probably shot that post credit scene like a week before so there was definitely plenty of time for them to shoot anything and they were definitely responding to the death of the kang situation so they were like oh uh x-men like we can't legally cast any new beasts so we can at least right. make kelsey Grammer like voice this cg puppet we made <laughs> 
Uh, so yeah. That's the situation we're in. Like rumor has it they can't replace the actress until at least 2025. 2025. So it looks like we're getting, you know, Ryan Reynolds, Hugh Jackman, and B Speck in. Who do you think they're gonna bring anyone else in from classic yeah. X-Men? As many well, as they can. Well, well right. I think yeah, I think they're yeah, they're all going theory. yeah, I think they're all going to appear, right? Like, I mean, I think they're all going to like that's why I say I think that like the Deadpool 3 movie is gonna be Deadpool kills the Fox first. Mm. Right? He's just he's just gonna kill everybody. Right, like for whatever reason, I I have no idea why he's gonna do it, but he's like everybody's just basically gonna die out there, right? And like that'll be it. Um, I don't know. <laughs> it looks like the like, fourth so. wall breaking they... movie ever. Like some of the screens that have come out is them fighting at the 20th Century Fox logo. Yeah, and things like that. <laughs> like, are we gonna say so? What, what well, I, I I I I mean, like I think they're gonna save all the Fox because like the Fox X Men universe is the most successful interconnected comic book universe outside of the mcu and i'm sorry dc fans that's the way it is like the fox x-men franchise was every movie was financially viable and successful outside of a couple of stragglers but like you know spin-off yeah. flicks but like they all were huge and they were especially all tentpole franchises for fox so as far as like hollywood producers are considering if i'm going to do secret wars there's going to be three players the mcu spider people and the X-Men. So like it when if and when Secret Wars happens, like you're gonna see if Professor Charles Xavier is alive, him, you know, like James Marsden Cyclops, Hugh Jackman Wolverine. Like it's gonna be that universe because like it's the only other big universe you can smash the MCU into. Otherwise, it's just gonna be like random weird cameos. Like no one's no one's gonna be excited to go see Secret Wars if they're like, look at all the punishers we have. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would be excited for that. Can you imagine the blood and mayhem? Oh, yeah, yes. like yeah, look, that it's Dolph great. Lundgren, it's Tom Jane, and it's John Bernthal. <laughs> I forgot about Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> yeah, and they're all just shooting Al, people in a line. Sal? Yeah. Um, actually, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, the DC Extended Universe is fourth in the highest grossing superhero film franchises, oh, while four. X-Men is sixth. I'm just saying, uh, can you all guess what number one is? I'm just... <laughs> Harry Potter. <Who's> number two. <laughs> number two is Spider-Man. <laughs> uh, that's not that's a one movie like there that's one that's one ip though that, nah, i anyway. it's what it says uh, uh mcu as a whole is number one number two is spider-man number three is avengers apparently the three Avengers oh, movies sh- are counted list all right <laughs> it's, it's also the list doesn't know what it's talking about <laughs> no it's on wiki that's that's what it is it's just wiki <laughs> so anyone could do it is what you're saying yeah. anyone could have written that <laughs> okay true yes <laughs> I, miss, I miss you sal <laughs> i really really do that list has no idea what it's listing about <laughs> exactly yeah transformers might be actually pretty pretty high on that list now i'm thinking about it but, <laughs> is yeah. it a superhero but movie though transformers Trans- also isn't crossing over with anybody you know what i mean it's not like G. I. Joe. oh it's yeah, I, I, over. G. I, I heard Joe. i heard but i haven't seen it yet and i'm really i'm so disappointed in myself i haven't seen the apparently post credit scene in which there is a crossover uh, well, uh, I mean, it, it, you know what it is, Rob. Have you heard of this crossover? Uh, I've heard of it, but I haven't actually read it. Oh, it's just great. The main character from the movie just gets recruited by a shadow organization. And he's like, if you want help, call me. And it's the G.I. Joe logo. Uh, what? <laughs> In the Transformers movie. And uh, now the new comic books are linking them all together. So, yeah. No, I, it's like, that's I, the yeah, plan I haven't, as I haven't as. seen the new Transformers. I yeah. would love to see that. Like, are you like, if you got me the Transformers from the opening sequence from Bumblebee, <laughs> and those are the specific ones no one else none of those other ones that just, just that one and then you recast everyone from gi joe at a hard reset and go like oh yeah no that's all the same universe uh i'm in oh yeah man give me give me like storm shadow and snake eyes like teaming yeah. up to fight like i don't know uh, like uh star scream or something like that <laughs> yeah, yeah exactly Jet- like anybody like it, it doesn't matter like yeah dude i would dude i would pay good money to see that right just yeah. give them all right. weapons they can defeat Transformers yeah. and be like, your guy's job is to fight Optimus Prime. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. would be a good movie. But I'm going to throw yeah. another caveat in there. What if the Ghostbusters were in that same universe? I mean, that Come was on. a thing, wasn't it? Like, there's That's, a what I mean. That's why I'm bringing that yeah, up. That I, I don't want to see that. But I the also, Ghostbusters like, crossed over with everybody at some I point. I know. I know. <laughs> that, was, that was a long time ago. But I do. Uh, I love the Ghostbusters. I don't want to see them cross over with anybody, really. I'm <laughs> okay. There, there is something that I do want to pick your all's brain on, because I've been wondering okay. this for a little while. Are you guys current on Godzilla versus the Justice League? Yes. Yeah. Godzilla okay. demolished Superman. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. So spoilers for all you guys who didn't read a story that came out two weeks ago. Um, <laughs> like three weeks ago now. Three weeks yeah. ago. What are your thoughts on Godzilla 
killing Superman. You think you think he's I dead? no, he's not dead. He's, he's I actually think he might be. Because mm. here's my theory right now. Okay, we don't know anything about it, but they've established this is like every story going on right now. Like Batman just teamed up with Santa Claus and upset <laughs> Superman. And I her, saw that. And they made sure in that book to establish it is in Dawn of DC. Like in that book, it's like this is actually in continuity because they reference yeah. things that are going on. But they made it very clear that Superman, the Justice League versus Godzilla is a separate universe. Yes. Yeah. I feel like they're going to set it up so that Superman's dying words are going to be something like team up or whatever. And somehow yeah. Godzilla is going to team up with Supergirl to fight the Toy Man's next monster. That's fair. Yeah. And that's where the story is going to go. Superman's gone. Supergirl's now the super of the universe and Godzilla. That would explain why there's like an extra super person in that on the Justice League for no good reason. Right. Because she was randomly there. Oh, I'm, I'm here for the night. Like, <laughs> yeah. But you would think if Godzilla killed, like, killed Superman. It wouldn't be something that would would be revealed in the second issue. It's just kind of like, yeah, man, like I can't hear his heartbeat, like he's dead. You yeah, know? yeah. Until yeah. Lois. Like you think he'd go out with a bang? Where like Godzilla is just beating him to death? You well, know, I mean, he, just he, like, he, like, were, like, Superman was beating Godzilla until Superman had to save a child. Yeah, I guess true. the most Superman way to go down. Like, yeah. <laughs> I guess. I, see, that's why. That's why I couldn't be a superhero, man. Because I would just be like, "Sorry about your luck, kid. I'm fighting Godzilla." Billy, right? you're like, an yeah. idiot. You're falling. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm not the giving space up. Space Shazam faster, kid. I don't know what to tell you. Just get out of the way. <laughs> Make the lightning strike faster. <laughs> it's already going the speed of light. I can't help you anymore. Yeah. <laughs> that was. Yeah, I didn't I question know. that. When Superman's catching Billy, I'm like, why didn't Billy just say Shazam again? Because like, they needed Superman to get hit by friggin' power. Like, that's why. Like, because yeah, get hit by tail. Like, and, like have yeah. you guys ever thought about that? They've never established, like, a cooldown period for Shazam. No. Like, you could just back and forth. So, when he's yeah, not... Yeah, what's, ref- what's his refractory period? Like, <laughs> no, okay. So, they... Okay, so, I don't, I don't know. I don't know if it rolls over, but they did it in Justice League Unlimited. When he fought Superman, and there's a point yeah. where he grabs him, and he keeps shouting Shazam. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Him. He does it like four or five times. Right. There's so, no cooldowns, my point. So yeah. magic. He whenever, can do it as much whenever as things wants. like Superman has to save Billy happen, I'm always like, why? Yeah. <laughs> right. Just yeah. say Shazam. You can say it forever. It doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you can just like we see him messing around in movies and comics. Shazam! 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 You're like, yeah. He uses well, it as a weapon. Like they did yeah. it because they need Superman to be off the table. Like they wanted to shoot him with Godzilla lightning. That's why. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, so so my only thought is like, because what I'm kind of hoping is that like Superman's recovering, right? They pull that stupid Dan Jurgens, you know, was it the oh, return Kryptonian of Superman? Where like, coma, yeah. yeah, the Kryptonian, Kryptonian, uh, Kryptonian healing coma. Yes, like yeah. that, right? Like they, they did. So he's just, he's healing, right? Yeah. Like in an Airbnb somewhere. Yeah. And, and so like you have Supergirl who's doing what she can, right? Because even though I still say that Supergirl is stronger than Superman, which they confirmed that in Crisis on Infinite Earths, they confirmed <laughs> that in the Red Daughter of Krypton from the New 52, right? Yep, they've yep. done it multiple times. Right? I, 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 I love I still... the reasoning behind it. She just doesn't have the control, so she's stronger, but he has control yeah, yeah. over it so he can easily. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm, hoping, I'm hoping it's going to be like, like Lois dies or something. And so Superman just like stops holding back. By that mm-hmm. point, like King Kong is there. And so Superman just like, Rex Godzilla and King Kong <laughs> at the same time. Oh, that's that's true. really what I'm hoping. Yes, I kind of really I, I, I I don't think that Superman's dead now because he hasn't fought King Kong yet. No, <laughs> yeah. he's gonna fight the monkey. <laughs> yeah. Fight. yeah, he does. Sal, <laughs> giant you sound to me like you're not a fan of Godzilla and King Kong. He's gotta fight the monkey. <laughs> gotta fight the monkey. I, I'm yeah. The, the, the book is a little lost on me because I'm not like a, the world's biggest Godzilla Kong fan, but like I I appreciate that it exists. Oh, I'm I am a huge Godzilla fan, and it, 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 Rob, you'll appreciate this. I'm mispronouncing all the monsters for fun. <laughs> never... <laughs> I don't even know their names. I don't even know their names, and I'm not even trying. I was like, well, the ones in the, in the comic, I'm like, oh, <laughs> the, no, the ones one... in the comic are obscure. I will, I'll admit, I didn't know all of those, so I'm just calling them like the Cthulian monster and the giant bat. I'm, I'm, yeah, these are like 1960s them, Godzilla names. villains. Who yeah. the hell cares? Like, right? yeah, <laughs> yeah, like in the in the videos, we're calling Cyborg iPhone. Like, I mean, I just, I'm just like, <laughs> whatever, man. Like, we're just giving them names. Like, I don't, yeah. I don't care. Like, nobody in my, nobody I, watching my videos cares. Like, I'm <laughs> doing that. I'm doing that in the in the my next April Fools. I'm gonna do that's iPhone. That's S Man. Yeah. That's yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, man. Uh, you know, like, that's the Batman. Just to annoy everyone who hates the Batman. Yes. <laughs> there we go. 
Yeah, I mean, like, like, like most people don't care what the names of those monsters are. What they care <laughs> about is the fact that like it's wrecking the entirety yeah. of the Bat family. Like, it's true. That's, <laughs> that's very what true. matters. Yeah, I'm yeah, so mad that they decided to have a whole sec sequence dedicated to Red Hood arguing so they can knock him out. Like, yeah. <laughs> man, dude, because yeah. it was such a dope moment when they're like, yeah. no, Red Hood, don't do it. He's like, but like, I'm going to, though. And just like, yeah. fires off and shoots it. Yes, dude, I man love gets that. the shot. Like, that was the best, just, like, He got the shot. Yes. Right. It was the most Red Hood thing that somebody could do. Absolutely, <laughs> it was. Dude, because I was, I was reading through that. And I was like, Benny's got to be going absolutely ape shit oh. over this. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, Red Hood, yeah, man. Red Hood. Oh, how long's it been since that <laughs> yeah yeah it was amazing yeah 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 so no i want to know your all thoughts on that because like like i've just kind of seen it on social media and in different places like it's just a really divisive thing people are like okay either there's no way he's dead and if right. he is dead that's ridiculous and people are just like i'm not going to read the story anymore yeah. and i'm like are you sure though because i'm pretty sure when the next issue comes out you're gonna buy you're gonna it buy see it. if he's alive yeah, yeah that's exactly right no yeah. so on that note, guys, I'm going to bring us down to close out the show. We've hit our, our – oh, we're, we're closing down the show. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode of Absolutely or Is It the Weekly Poll. I mean, we can just throw both names in there, whatever. Yeah, if you guys did enjoy it, let us know in the comments down below. And don't forget to let us know on Twitter how much you enjoyed the episode. Tweet me, tweet Sal, tweet Rob. We're easy to find on the internet. If you want more of Rob, since he's a guest, his channel is Comics Explained. And uh, that's, that's weird to hear you say that. Like, right. like if you guys want to find more of Rob, go to comments explain. Like, it is, it's weird hearing you say that. Like, I'm, I mean, I'm, 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 let me ask you this if I didn't promote it, wouldn't you have been more upset? Like, oh, like, so Benny hell, just man? doesn't give a shit about me? Like, not really, man. It would have just felt like the old days of the weekly poll where it's, it's like, so where can they find us? And it's like, well, yeah, you can find true. me at comments explain. And Benny's like, you can find me at comic story. Well, so Rob, like, you if you want to be like speaking, you're already poll. subscribed to both these guys. Like, yeah. it's. <laughs> If you want yeah, to make the old days, yeah. you just got to show up. I told you, every Tuesday, same Sal time, same Sal channel. That's, that's you just true. give us like an hour notice. Hey, guys, I feel like hopping in. Like, <laughs> yeah, I need to because like, I, I kept forgetting. I need to send a, set a calendar reminder. Yeah, yeah, so then it's just like, but hey, guys. I don't right be now, you're the guest and I'm doing my appropriate due diligence. True. Check true. out Comics Explained, everyone. And don't forget to check out me, Comic Story, and that is Sal over at Comic Pop. And we'll see you next time right here at Absolutely! Marvel in DC, or this one's absolutely comics. I don't know. We got too many things. <laughs> <laughs> Later, guys. Yeah.